your boy wavy ty and i'm back again with another video let's get it today's video is going to be about maps military entrance processing station this is where you go for the first time to either sign pick a job take the asvab or you go because you're about to leave and you have your ship date so i'm going to give you my experience and also some tips and tricks so make sure you watch this whole video let's jump straight into it decided I wanted to join the Navy I went to my recruiter local recruiter and uh, told them I wanted to join the Navy the first thing they asked me is why I want to join the Navy and they do the whole you know recruiter thing about we have so many different jobs and they tell you the benefits and they tell you why it's good to join the military and how it will help you later in your life and different things like that like it looks good on your resume for example just giving you all the basic things that every recruiter around you know the United States will give you all the basic stuff then he had me take an ASVAB in in the office so I took an ASVAB it took a, a couple hours and then after that he saw where I was at I don't remember what I scored but I remember I scored a pretty decent so if you score low on that ASVAB, they're usually gonna tell you no, buy ASVAB for dummies, come back in a few months and try to take the ASVAB again because they're obviously not gonna send you down to MEPS if you score low on their ASVAB because it just shows that you won't score high you know, on the ASVAB down at MEPS. So it'd be stupid to send you all the way down to MEPS to take an ASVAB that you're gonna fail. So I ended up passing it with a decent score. So my recruiter asked me when I decided to go to MEPS. I wanted to go to MEPS like pretty soon. So it was a Monday. By that next Wednesday, I ended up going to MEPS. He then told me the to spill about, you know, what to bring to MEPS. I'm gonna be staying overnight to bring clothes, to bring, you know, my hygiene stuff and to make sure I bring like my social security card, ID and all that different stuff. I had to do a lot of paperwork. You're gonna be signing a lot of stuff to go to MEPS. They're gonna be asking you, you know, to list your criminal record, you know, what tickets you've got, any, you know, things you have, you know, so that's what you're gonna do before you go to MEPS. It's a ton of paperwork. So you wanna make sure that you have time to do all that stuff when you're processing to go to MEPS. I get to the date that I'm leaving for MEPS, that Wednesday, and we left at like 11, and MEPS was, I'm in Indiana, South Bend, Indiana, so MEPS was like two, three hours away, and we took a van, there was a bunch of us, either people in the debt program or people that were going down to MEPS for, for the first time, and you know, we talk and all that stuff, it's cool, it's a drive down there, long drive down there. And then we picked up a few more people, you know, got to talk to them about what jobs they picked and different things or what jobs they want. And that's pretty much what we did. We got to the hotel. There's a hotel that's gonna be like five to 10 minutes away from MEPS. And you'll go to the hotel first. And then early in the morning, the next day, you'll go to MEPS. When you first go to MEPS, you're gonna see a bunch of other people with the people that you came with. It's gonna be like, all you guys in your bag, all you guys with your bags just waiting, you know, to get checked in, get your room and all that. You eventually go into this like lounge area where it's really cool. It's like for all the military people. Uh, there's like Xboxes, PS4s, pool tables, like nice couches that are like comfortable and like just a lot of TV. So it's a nice, you know, chill area to, you know, get to know everybody and chill with everybody. And uh, after that, you get like your room number, you give them your like, uh, your ID, you know, show them that you're here, mark it off. The lady or guy will give you like a whole spill of the time, the time you gotta be places, the rules, like there's like, I went there at like three o'clock and there was like a meeting at like eight o'clock and at the meeting at eight o'clock, it was just like fast. It was like, oh, did you forget your toothbrush or, 
different hygiene stuff or shaving stuff because you want to go to well you don't have to go to meps shaved if you're a guy but they have stuff just in case you want to and all that type of stuff and then they tell you like breakfast lunch and dinner times and all that and you can actually go off you can like leave meps and some people's parents came and uh you can leave meps and go you know across the street from mcdonald's there's a mcdonald's across the street and different restaurants so yeah you could go there and, and, and do all that stuff i actually had a lot of fun at meps like i didn't think it was going to be that fun i met a lot of girls met a lot of guys met a lot of girls yeah yeah it, it was fun it was a good time so uh you go down to meps you know uh we had mcdonald's you know we went across the street about 10 15 of us then we went to the pool and stayed at the pool all night my recruiter told me to not go into the pool that it would mess up a test but i was like what like i i just think it was like you know just you know bull so i, I was like man i'm going to the pool it ended up not me messing up any test that i took so i don't know what he was talking about maybe he had a good reason maybe it was a good reason but it didn't mess up any of my tests and yeah we just hung out and, and did all that and had a good time and then we had to go in the to the rooms at 10 o'clock there are people there that's already been there before so they said that no no one looks if you're in your rooms checks if you're in your rooms so I, we didn't go to our rooms and i end up you know being the guy one of the guys that i was roommates with was actually in the group so i was happy and i noticed when they started giving us you know roommates and you know choosing our rooms the the person behind you like so i'm first in line the person behind me would get the same room as me so when i noticed they were doing that i was like you know i was like oh yeah you know i'm gonna choose somebody i'm cool with instead of choosing somebody like i don't talk to completely no and then just get that you know messed up roommate like you know what i'm saying so you know i was already like you know trying to get somebody that was cool and all that that i was cool with other thing they're gonna go over is because there's a lot of restaurants and different bars they say no drinking even if you're above 21 no drugs you know what i'm saying like they just give you all the basic common sense stuff because you're about to go to meps tomorrow so when we had our first meal which was dinner man i don't know what's wrong like I don't know what's wrong with the dinner there, but it was cold and it was nasty. Like, I, I just had McDonald's, like I told you guys. So I was like, nah, I ain't feeling this. And I just, you know, you know, ate the McDonald's and, you know, just didn't eat the dinner. Because I don't know what kind of, who make the food or whatever, but it seemed like they just don't care. They, they don't realize that they're feeding humans and not like animals or something like that. I don't know. The food is cold and, and rough and... I think it's just that they know we're gonna be there for such a short time so they don't put like all their effort or pretty much any effort into the food. So just expect that. Expect to bring money down there to go across the street or nearby to get some food because the food there is gonna be nasty. I'm telling you, I'm telling you, bruh, it ain't gonna be for you. I don't care. I'm the type of guy where I pretty much like any food. So if it's nasty to me, I think it's gonna be nasty to everybody watching this video. Oh, the mistake I made was I stayed up until like 12 o'clock and I found out that you wake up at 4 a.m. Like they told us in a meeting, they told us in a meeting, but I kind of like forgot about it. And then my roommate said it and I was like, dang, I'm gonna be at MEPS all tomorrow with like four, three hours, three, four hours of sleep. I was just like, man, how am I gonna do this? But they have a, a loud, they call you in the morning and it's really loud. So you definitely will get up. So man, I was, I was up all night. And one thing about my roommate, I ain't trying to call nobody out, but you know, like I told you earlier, I picked my roommate, was cool and everything. But I go into the room, we go into the room at like 12 o'clock. You know, my roommate tell me, you know, we gotta be up at four tomorrow. And I'm like, dang. 
And then next thing you know, I'm like ready to go to bed and my roommate still got his light on. So I'm thinking, okay, you know, give him a few minutes to, you know, cut it off. You know what I'm saying? Before I say, hey, bro, we got to go to sleep. And then dude get on the phone with his girlfriend. And it's like, okay, that's annoying, but I'm tired. I'm going to just go to sleep. And then like five minutes into the conversation, they just start arguing. What's wrong with you, bro? What the heck? You tripping, bro. You tripping. <laughs> just start going at it. And he had her on speakerphone because he wanted me to hear. You know, I guess it was a little entertaining. And yeah, it, it was it was just funny. And then they hung up the phone, you know, I'm mad and stuff. And just by me being in the room with him, I was like forced into becoming a therapist. It was like a whole therapy session because, well, really, it wasn't a therapy session because I wasn't talking. I was trying to go to sleep. So he just kept talking about his girlfriend all night and they problems and all that, all that mess. Don't, don't. Don't be that person. Don't be that guy. Don't be that female that just does that. Like, I've only known this dude for like a couple hours pretty much. And he telling me his whole life story about his girlfriend and all that. I ain't gonna lie. I didn't care. I don't know why I would care. So don't, just don't be that person. And another thing, if you are talking to somebody and somebody puts on their headphones. I was trying to be nice about it. I was trying to... And instead of just saying to him, bro, shut up. I don't care. Like, I wanted to say, I'm like, okay, you know, I'm going to just put my headphones in. Dude, I put my headphones in, you know, trying to go to sleep, listen to music. The dude keep talking. The dude just kept talking, bro. Like, so I just turned my music up loud, and I was just like, bro. And then... The next day we woke up early and I'm like, bro, what was going on yesterday? Bro, come on now. You know what I'm saying? Like, it was just crazy. You know, just all night. Like, man. So when you go to MEPS, I actually, 4 a.m., you know, you're going to get on a bus at 5 o'clock. You know, wake up at 4, you get on a bus at 5 o'clock. They take muster, which is attendance for people that don't know what muster means. And you all get on a bus, uh, you're all tired, you know, especially people like me who barely got any sleep, just tired. And the first thing you do is you stand at attention. For you guys that don't know, you guys are going to learn quickly when you go to the military what standing at attention is. But it's pretty much like this, but standing up uh, with your feet like that. And you stand at attention, they tell you any rings, watches, belts got to come off and get placed in your bag. And because you go into a, a man, you go into a, a metal detector, you go into a metal detector. Uh, so you take all those things off, you walk through the metal detector, you put your bag into like a closet place where you keep it you got to put your phone there and then you go to you go to straight into the building so there's gonna be different like offices you go into uh when you first get there it's gonna be like navy marines national guard air force obviously i'm in the navy so i went to the navy i got a name tag that said my name and basically like it's my first time here you know so i gotta get physical and all that so the people know at MEPS, you know, what I gotta do. So then you get like a packet, you go stand back in line, you get your uh, fingerprint taken. And this is when I learned first about the standby to standby, you're gonna be there all day. And second, it's gonna be just a day of, you ha don't have your phone on you, like I said, so you're just gonna be there all day without your phone, just bored. And no one is like allowed to talk. So it's just like a real long day. This is they gonna give you like a lot of paperwork that says like, yes, no, or I don't know. Just literally answer no to every question. Some questions are gonna try to trick you up. And some questions, for example, if you're a male and you see a question number 15 say like 
are you pregnant? Obviously, you answer no to that, you know. Or uh, did you take a pregnancy test, for example? So first, they're going to give you a test. And that test is going to ask a bunch of different questions. Try to trick you up. So just say no to every question. But there might be some questions that only apply to females. So make sure you're paying attention. And males, or for females, there might be questions that only apply to males. So make sure you're paying attention. But they try to trick you up. And the whole time they're there, they're saying they're not trying to you know, find any way to say you can't sign or you can't leave for boot camp or sign if that's your first time there. But it seemed like it when I was down there, it seemed like they just kept asking me the same questions, seeing if I would change my answer. You know, the doctor just kept asking me the same questions. Next, you'll take a test. You'll take different tests. You'll take uh, eyeing, uh, eye, the eye test, which is, you know, the, the basic uh, the hearing test, they'll put you in a closed room with other people and you do the beeping thing you did in school. Like, I'm pretty sure everyone does that in school, so you should know what I'm talking about. And then you do a colorblind test. And then after that, you do, uh, they see all your scores, all, uh, they see all your scores and that can either qualify you or disqualify you from jobs now i know there are some people in my maps that got disqualified because i guess they didn't know they were colorblind i don't know how that works but didn't know they were colorblind um and yeah they got disqualified from some jobs next you go into your boxers for the guys and they you're in a room and they tell you to strip down to your boxers. I didn't I didn't know what was going on, you know, because there was a couple, you know, civilians in there and there was a doctor in there and they just shut the doors, about 10, 15 of us guys. And we had on our boxers and we just sit down on the benches. It's like really awkward and, and weird. Like, and then you find out you're doing your physical you know, you got to do all these different movements to show that you can do it, uh, like duck walk and different things, which is weird in your underwear. Uh, you get your height and your weight, uh, so you want to make sure that you, uh, you're you not too big, you know what I'm saying? Like, running like every video I say, if you haven't left for boot camp yet, you should be running. I mean, it's just... It's just stupid not to go into boot camp in shape, especially when you're just sitting at home all day waiting to leave for boot camp. You should be running, you should be studying, uh, and it'll just make boot camp ease. Next, you're gonna go into the doctor's office. Now, I had a female doctor, and there was a male in there too, just pretty much making sure nothing is going on. But he was like, he was like a looking at his phone, reading a book, that type of stuff, where when she checked me, uh, she checked down in that area, asked me different questions, and was writing stuff down. Uh, now, I didn't, some people say that they have to bend over and all that, I, I, I didn't get asked that, but I, I didn't get, I guess you gotta do it if they say it, but my, my doctor didn't say to me, to bend over so don't be surprised if you go in there you go to meds you take off your underwear and you know the doctors touching all over you and then they say bend over don't be shocked so i'm telling you it can happen but it just didn't happen to me next we had a drug test so pee in a bottle you know everyone's gonna have a drug test male and female the only difference is the females have a pregnancy test too. So, um, and then after that, you have this moment of truth thing where they basically ask, they basically just try to pressure you into saying something uh, that maybe you lied about or you forgot to tell them. And they say like, oh, it'd be like a $500,000 fine or some crazy number like that. and. 
you'll spend five years in jail if they find out something to try to get you to, you know, say something. And, you know, they're pretty much just yelling at you, you all you guys in a room. And uh, some people can get intimidated by that. You know, me, I, I wasn't intimidated by that. My recruiters already told me about it. And, dude, when I tell you some people, you may not think you could get intimidated, but there was this dude that raised that raised his hand and they said what's wrong and he said i had spine surgery when i was three years old i was like what bro i wanted to laugh so hard but i didn't want to get in trouble i was like bro why would you even say that that dude end up I don't even know if he's in the in the end up making it to the service. I'm guessing he's in the service by now, but he definitely didn't take the oath and sign with us that day. That was crazy. Do not pull that mess down there. Don't. I've got so I've got surgery on my wrist. I mean, they knew about that. I had to tell them about that, but I had to get a bunch of paperwork. So if you gonna tell them something about you breaking something or spraining something, be ready to not sign and to have to get the paperwork and, you know, therapy session. You got to prove that you went to therapy. You got to prove that, you know, went to the doctor and the doctor is saying you're all right. So just be prepared for that. There's people who, you know, broke their ankle, all that. If you broke your ankle when you were 10 years old and now you're 18, you're 20 years old and you're fine why would you even bring that up and just make the process even longer you know at MEPS and now you leave MEPS you haven't signed you got to go back to MEPS and it's just making the process longer than it has to be don't even bring that stuff up and they will ask you multiple times have has anyone told you to lie about something uh, to make something up or has a recruiter you didn't hear that from me. You didn't hear that from me. But I'm telling you what some people did and what I would have did if I would have broken my ankle at like 10 years old or something. And now I'm going to MEPS at 18. It would be stupid for me to bring that up to them. Because they say they can go in your uh, record history or like medical history. They say they can do that. But... I've not witnessed them do that for anyone, and I don't think they can do that. You know what I'm saying? Because, to be honest, if they would have went in my medical history, I wouldn't be making this video right now, and I wouldn't be in the Navy. Because I've had a lot of... I played sports during high school, and I've had a lot of injuries. You know, when I went down to MEPS, I had, like... I wouldn't say... I had, like, an Achilles injury. Like, obviously, I didn't need surgery, but... I was limping, but I was trying to hide that as much as possible because if they would have saw that, me limping, I would have definitely got sent back. I had to return all paperwork and all that. So do not bring that up. But remember, I didn't tell you to not bring that up. For that, you're going to keep go back and you're going to sit down. You're going to stand by the standby. You're going to learn that a lot. This is like the first, you get a taste of it here, but in boot camp, you do that a lot. When I say stand by to stand by, that means you just waiting for a long time. Just waiting for your name to be called. Just waiting to do something in boot camp for a long time. Like, you might go to a place at 1500 and just sit there and wait there for literally an hour and a half until 1630. You know what I'm saying? And, and, and I know you're thinking, because I used to think that, why didn't we just come at 16? You know, and wait till 1630 instead of instead of coming all the way at 15 and having to wait an hour and a half. But that's just the way the military does it. So this is where you get a taste of it. Then after that, you're going to should be lunchtime at this time. You eat lunch. The lunch is actually good there. It's like sandwiches, chips and uh, like a dessert, like cookies or something like that. And it's really good. Or it's different sandwiches like ham turkey or a peanut butter and jelly something like that you know what i'm saying and it's actually good uh you so you're either gonna at this point so let's say you're going back there 
you're going back there. You're going to sign, do the oath again, and then you're going to leave. Let's say it's your first time there. You're going to pick a job, which this is where the major tip comes into. A lot of people don't know this. So let's say you score 85 on the ASVAB. They offer you hospital corpsman. They offer you quartermaster, and then they offer you boss's mate. They tell you about those jobs, and they're going to make it sound good. They're going to make those jobs sound like the best jobs in the world. You know what I'm saying? And you you know, you know, think about it, and you realize that you don't like any of those jobs, that you wanted to become a nuke. You know what I'm saying? You, quali- you scored high enough to become a nuke, and you want to be a nuke. So what you can do, this is why they don't tell a lot of people this, because they don't want a lot of people doing it. But what you can do is you cannot sign that day for a job not take the oath and you can say you know call me back when the new job opens for me and that's exactly what they'll do uh that's what happened to me i got lucky because my dad was in the military so i I was lucky that he was in the military and you know they're able to contact me when my job quartermaster was open and uh, a lot of people don't know that so people are getting stuck with these jobs like Oh, they, I hear that all the time in boot camp. They only offer me three jobs. They only offer me five jobs. I chose eight, uh, air pack, man. I chose C, uh, S pack because they only offer me certain jobs and I didn't want those jobs. So I just chose, uh, the pack route. No, you don't have to choose that job. They literally can contact you once that job opens, but they don't like to do it. Your recruiter might be a little aggravated with you, but so what this is going to be your job for the next four to six years you might as well take your time and pick the job you want and pick the job that best fits you because i i might like quartermaster you know i like it i enjoy it but you may pick quartermaster in the navy and think you know i hear a lot of good things about it but then you you pick it you go to the navy you know you do all that stuff and you figure out you absolutely hate it you know, so don't go off of someone else's opinion. You have to do your own research. And once you take the ASVAB, a lot of people don't know this. At the bottom of the paper is going to be uh, an AFQT score. So uh, I know they're accepting like 26s, 27s in the Navy. So it's 20. it usually was 31 and up, but 27 through 99. So obviously, the closer you get to 99, the more jobs you qualify for. On the top of the paper, it's going to be line scores. Those line scores uh, tell you what jobs you qualify for. I'll leave a link in the description down below. So once you go to MEPS and you see your ASVAB score, you can know what jobs you qualify for. So let's say, uh, so each, for example, this subject plus this subject, so math plus science plus engineering has to equal 200. If you get 200, you qualify for that for that job. That's what it is. And like I said, let's say you score high like I did. They're going to offer you like three to four jobs. They're not going to offer you like I scored high. I should have got a long list of jobs that I was offered, but they're going to only offer you jobs that the Navy needs. The Navy really needs and they're going to make it sound like the best jobs ever. So make sure, you know, if you don't like that job, you just say, you know, I'll come back when it's available. Contact me when it's available because you don't want to get stuck for four to six jobs. For four to six years with a job you don't like because I'm telling you every day is gonna be miserable and you four to six years is, is a long time to be working somewhere you don't like or doing something every day that you don't like. So that's why I keep saying make sure you choose the job that you want and you do the research. So next I uh I signed, you know, I signed, I took the oath. And I finally got to leave. I got there at 4 a.m. I was leaving at 10 p.m. You guys might not stay there that late. I don't know why I stayed there that late. But 
you're gonna stay there like a long time. Like I think the earliest you're leaving is like seven. Like seven. Maybe it's a little bit earlier than that, but pretty much you get what I'm saying. You get like you're gonna be there all day. Like you're gonna be tired. Um and if it's your first time there, like I said, you just leave after that, you have your date, you go to your recruiters the next day, and now you're in the debt program, so they're just telling you uh, about the debt program, which is basically, the debt program is just preparing you for boot camp. It's just teaching you um, what you need to know. They give you like a little book that you can learn different things like rank and recognition, general orders and all that, and you just meet up once a month to study that or either to work out you work out in debt program too now i left during like the winter time so i didn't work out uh with my debt program i just studied all, all the time and once a week i had to you know send my recruiter uh, my time mile and a half time when i timed it on an app so you might have to do that um, or like i said just study so that's going to be all for today's video. I hope you enjoyed it. If you're, if this is your first time watching my channel, please show love, subscribe. You know, I answer every single question, every single DM I get, every sing single message I get on Facebook, every single comment down below, I'm answering. And some comments, I'm not going to lie, I do not know the answer. I've been in the Navy like going coming on a year september 14th is going to be my year in the navy and i don't know every single uh, answer but you know exactly what i do as soon as i go to my ship i ask someone that's been in the navy four or five six years plus i ask them you know about a question and then as soon as i get home or as soon as i you know have time at work i answer you right away so if you got a question about a rate like this guy uh, in the comments wanted to know about GM, like what they do on a daily basis. And I have friends on the ship that are GMs, but I never really asked them, you know, or really paid attention to what they do. So what I did is I went to the ship and I asked them, can you give me a run through of what you guys do on a daily basis? And he gave it to me and I commented, or, you know, I answered the guy and the guy was, uh, was really happy. So I will do that you know, for you guys, you know, cause picking a job in the Navy, you know, it's a huge decision. You gotta take it very seriously. You don't wanna be one of these persons that hate going to work every single day. So, you know, I'm gonna post very soon. Any questions, any uh, things you want me to do, any videos you want me to do, you know, comment them down below. Or remember, DM me on Facebook or DM me on Instagram, message me on Facebook, and I will definitely answer. Remember, demonstration speaks louder than conversation. Peace.